Welcome back. I'm Eleni Jokas and this is Connecting Africa. Kenya is one of the most technologically developed countries in Africa. Trailblazing tech from Nairobi is responsible for helping to alleviate the consequences of climate change in some of the continent's driest regions. Dr. Guyo Malicha Roba is passionate about data. He uses it to mitigate the effects of droughts and food shortages across the Horn of Africa. I've come to Nairobi's Jamil Observatory to meet him. I want to talk about the Jamil Observatory Research Project, what its aim is and what you've already been able to achieve. So I think there are a few things there. One of the first is that they, I think for, through research, they've realized actually the resilience of the pastoral population in the face of recurrent crisis is not strong enough to, 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 to bounce back to support the communities in the normal structure of cycles of drought. Number two, I think government don't have enough resources, neither do they have the right data to act in time. And that timeliness question is still a very big question in that space. The resource question is another question that is up there. So data and resources are a constant issue in this. But then there's the other side of it, which I think is the responses is piecemeal, fragmented, and also, I think, not very much embedded in the long-term planning and processes. And it's reactive, isn't it? It's very reactive, so it's not embedded in the long-term planning yeah. processes. So, and then private sector is not interested in going to the north and, and, and dry areas because the, the, I think the viability of what they want to do is not good enough for the business. So, host of all these issues, I think, made the, the project an interesting one to try. So, the observatory is sort of like an actual research project, uh, which try what we call brokering knowledge, science, and connecting different dots to make sure that how do we do this thing early enough before the drought reach emergency. You were a herder. What have you learned from that experience that you're applying to what you're doing right now? Because you come with incredible knowledge. I grew up in pastoral areas. I was herding as a young, as a young boy. Yeah. The season was very good. We never had reason to be worried. We couldn't even sell our animals. But then I think for me, that live experience gives me the good days. But then I've also seen the bad days currently because I, I have livestock right now. I lost substantially. I lost like six to eight cows in the last drought myself. So for me, I think the things I bring out is actually positioning of research to respond to the real issues. But technology also forms part of this, right? Um, so traditional early warning systems, which people have been relying on for generations versus what we're seeing now on how technology can amplify the data and the warning systems as well. How important is technology in this? Yeah, I think technology is very important, especially when uh, you're looking at the forecasting, building scenarios around the weather and the weather pattern. I think that's why our colleagues in the University of Edinburgh, which is the lead of the project, are bringing a huge part of the earth observation, artificial intelligence, the big data, and all these things, especially for Somalia, where collecting data and preparing is difficult. So there's a huge part of this in terms of, I think, looking at the uh, risk profiling. Uh, drought is not homogeneous, it's a heterogeneous thing within a particular landscape. Because we're struggling with counting animals in pastoral areas, and that solution will tell us this is the number of animals in when this, when the, at the onset of drought, and this is the animals that we have. So when you want to do restocking, basically you can guide very purposefully that this is the area where the risk is more amplified. And this is a cross-section that impacts, right, different communities in Ethiopia, in Kenya and Somalia, correct? Yeah. How are you working cross-border with those communities? Currently we are present first, I think, in, in Kenya and Somalia, largely in Kenya because of where I'm based, and secondary in Somalia through the government agencies to understand what they need for us to respond. I think when you look at cross-border communities, just let me give you an example of Ethiopian border, where I come from. The community just cut across 200 kilometers, 300 kilometers, are the same communities which are cut by geographical boundaries. So but those this, boundaries don't really exist for the they communities? They don't exist, there. yeah. It's not an ecological boundary, it's a, it's a political boundary. So what happens is that communities have stronger reciprocity and arrangement between them. So last season, I think quite a number of animals from Ethiopia survived their drought you know, uh, around Mount Kenya, which is around 540 kilometers from the border. That's how far they came from Ethiopia. So for me, I think two things which I'm looking at, uh, which could be of interest. One is how do we embed governance and strengthen governance for mobility? Because mobility is one of the essential thing people do to escape drought episodes. But nobody's investing in mobility. Nobody's developing infrastructure that cut across these different areas. So in our characterization and profiling of drought, one of the things which 
possibly we are thinking of doing trade collaboration with other partners in Ethiopia, in Somalia, is to look at these mobility corridors and see how do we actually shape using data, using research, infrastructure that enable people to be mobile, to utilize. And with that thought, it was time to go and visit some of the other attractions that make Kenya a must-visit destination. A few minutes ago, I was stuck in traffic. I visited tech entrepreneurs and saw incredible innovation. Ten minutes later, out of the center of Nairobi, I'm now in a national park. And it gives you a sense of how you can bridge the world of technology and sustainability.